Hello, I'm Ronnie Eldridge. Welcome to Eldridge and Company. We're used to recycling. Some people even re-gift. But in Long Island City, in the materials for the arts warehouse, everyone reuses. Developed in 1978 by the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, it is one of the largest reuse centers in the country and a trove of treasures for the city's public schools, artists, and nonprofit organizations. My guest today is Harriet Taub, the executive director of this wonderful endeavor. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. It must be so much fun to go to this warehouse every day. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I get up every day and I love to go to work. And uh, it's, we have a 35,000 square foot warehouse. So we have our offices and then adjacent to this very large 25,000 square foot warehouse, which is filled every day with who knows what. Uh, you know, it's just every day is, is a different story. It's like going through the warehouse at, at um, Ikea, for instance. So you take a basket and you pick up what Absolutely. you want. Absolutely. That's exactly what happens. When our groups come in, um, they get a shopping cart and they get a clipboard because we have them track what they're taking because mm. we have a pretty sophisticated inventory system. Uh, you know, what goes in, we have to track it. We give our donors ta letters for tax purposes. Oh, right. We weigh the items so that the Department of Sanitation, who's one of our funders, um, knows how much we're keeping out of the landfill. And then the most important thing is that the people who actually take the things, our recipient members, have to send thank you letters to the people who made the donations. That's so nice. <laughs> so yeah, they get a clipboard and they get a shopping cart and it's like supermarket sweep for the arts. So when the kids get something in their classroom, do they all write? They must write some wonderful you know, letters sometimes. Huh? Um, I actually think that is a wonderful idea, and it's a suggestion we often make to our public school teachers, which when they are beleaguered by the amount of letters they have to send, yeah, I say, yeah. give it to your students. Yeah. Let, all they have to do is one. And when right. if you were giving us something, Ronnie, yeah. and you got a thank you letter, and it was a handwritten note from a student, you know, you would keep that. That would be the best. That right? would be the best, exactly. So, the donors, you have to take your stuff there? Uh, we have a couple ways to do it. We have trucks, and we have a couple of trucks. We have two drivers. So we send them out every day throughout the metro area to do pickups. Um, it's hard to get on that schedule because there's so many people that have things, and not just individuals like you or me, but, you know, industry, Estee Lauder and... Uh, Mark Jacobs and Victoria's Secret, all of these people that are donating to us. Some of them deliver, so that's another way of mm -hmm. doing it. And then, um, so people can drop off Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. They can arrange with us if it's large enough and valuable enough for us to send a large truck and two men, or they can ship it to us. How um, many people work there? We have 18 people that are now working there. And a lot of volunteers? Tons of volunteers. I'm so glad you brought that up. We have a very robust volunteer program. We work with um, weekly. We have groups uh, from organizations that work with adults with special needs. So YAI, which is an organization that we work with, and AHRC. So they s send their groups in with a group leader. Oh, great. And that's a really nice thing. We also have people who just have some time on their hands between mm -hmm. jobs. And we also have interns and high school interns sometimes who have right. community service time. Yeah. So We'll talk about the programs in a minute, but fascinates me is the whole physical part of it. So a delivery is made. Mm -hmm. Then somebody has to check, uh, uh, check it in, basically. Right, right. right? And do you discard stuff? You must sometimes. Um, well, we, are, we try to be as thorough as we can on the front end in terms of if we're especially Telling if we're going people. to exactly especially if we're going to pick something up we've arranged to do a pickup we pretty much screen things and we ask that it's immediately reusable so after all those old computers you know we can't take them yeah. no one wants them so if it's technology that's more than 3 or 4 years old we'll turn it down and there are other places that you can give it, it. exactly so you know we try to make you know referrals whenever possible sometimes if someone drops things off you know, a film mm -hmm. studio, for example, or, you know, after they've done a film tape, a film shoot, they'll drop off, you know, tractor trailer. There might be things in there that we wouldn't take, but it would be very hard for us to say, we'll take that, but we won't take mm -hmm. that. So you take everything. We take everything. And the funniest thing is that often the things that I think, I mean, I've done this for 15 years, but, you know, something will come in and it's kind of rusty yeah. and it's, you know, and I'm, who took this? Why did we take this? You know, <laughs> and the next day it's gone. It's gone. Because someone is using it for a set, they're using it for a play, they're, you, they're gonna paint it, you know, you just amazing. never know. We it's deal really... with amazingly creative people. Do you have, what was the best donation you ever had? Did you have one? 
you know, people ask that, and um, <laughs> it's funny because there's so many fantastic things. So, for example, event planners, um, they often have to do really crazy, wacky things, and it's a one-time only thing, and the next day, you know, they have to get it out. So we've gotten a donation a number of years ago from um, an event planner of, like, 2,000 brand-new baseballs. <laughs> now, you know, what are you going to do with them? You could make an art project, but basically we we did some work behind the scenes and we got them to go to an organization that at baseball and needs baseballs exactly <laughs> right. um, and you know we often do that like we don't take clothing and we don't take clothing because there are better organizations that so you don't do take that. costumes costumes we take okay. but like standard clothing so sometimes some of our uh, manufacturers of who will give us fabric will throw in clothing in the box so instead of just saying you know okay what are we going to do with it we'll call ACS which is the administration yeah. for children's services mm -hmm. um, and we'll tell them we've got clothing they have foster care centers intake centers the Department of Juvenile Justice which mm -hmm. is now folded into ACS they need things so you know we try to do a lot of you know, brokering to get the things that we get in that are not really quote-unquote quote arts materials to the people who can really yeah. use them. So give me an example of what's something great. Oh, we had a couple of hundred plastic lobsters that came in not too long ago. And, you know, if you're doing um, <laughs> The Little Mermaid, <laughs> you, you know, you're a public school and you're going to do The Little yeah. Mermaid and you come in and you find, you know, yeah. the plastic lobsters, all of a sudden your set is Or you're it. doing a collage. You've got them in the water. Exactly. You know, I was just thinking about that because I went to one of these, um, uh, you know, street fairs or something and I bought an old red metal lobster <laughs> i was thinking to myself just the other day why did why did you buy it what are you going to do with it so now i have to go home and make a collage or something now that you're collage. making me think about it. but it it's an ex so then when it comes in and it's it, it's lob it's noted in the thing then who places it do you have it by order so you we, we are it's interesting that you talk about the order because we um we are very organized, so we're sort of like a Home Depot in a Lowe's. Right. So on the aisles, the end of the aisles, it will actually say, this is the trim and notion aisle, this oh, is hardware, so this is paint. So people, you know, get their carts and they sort of know where to go. When things come in, as I mentioned, they get weighed and then we enter them into our database and then they are put out on the floor by either staff and or volunteers. Um, so, for example, we have a very great relationship with Macy's, and we love Macy's, and um, yeah. every year around this time, they have been given lots and lots of sample holiday items mm -hmm. that never actually go out. It's not production items. It's not items for the store. So they ship us, we, we pick up, actually, um, really a truckload or more of holiday trees and holiday ornaments. Amazing. And, um, you know, er what are you going to do with them? Well. If you're a nonprofit organization that's not necessarily public school, you're going to decorate for the holidays. Um, you know, city agencies come, can come in and get those things. So a lot of volunteers will be sort of unwrapping them. They're all wrapped in beautiful little tissue. Does everybody say, oh, look what I have. Exactly. <laughs> everybody loves. And people, call, people actually email us in advance and say, is the Macy's holiday stuff <laughs> in? Because, you know, they're yeah. really counting on that. To, so do, uh, when it comes after Christmas, do you get that stuff too? Oh, you know what? We and have you, Christmas you sometimes. for a whole year? No, but we sometimes have Christmas in July. Mm -hmm. And we also have uh, an organ. Uh, a, donor in the Bronx called American Christmas and we love mm -hmm. local you know businesses and what they do is they do the lobbies for all of the big buildings so what happens with American Christmas is that we get their Christmas stuff in January and February <laughs> do you does a, an organization have to be exact investigated or certified or something before they can use your facilities uh, as terms of people coming in as yeah, recipients, yeah. yes. We have an application process. So because we are city government and because mm -hmm. we are the Department of Cultural Affairs, um, you have to have an ongoing arts program to be a member. So outside of the public schools, which can come mm -hmm. in, and we have a registration process for them, uh, an organization has to apply, and they have to have, as I said, they, their mission has to either be arts, so all of the art service providers, the museum education departments, the theater companies, dance companies, we know they, they can apply, yeah. no problem. Social service organizations, after school programs, 
places that work with senior citizens. Mm -hmm. As long as their mission is not arts, right. but as long as they have an ongoing arts program, okay. they have art therapy, they do a dance class, then they can register and come And if in. you're an artist, an independent artist? Individual artists we don't support. Um, and I often say, I know everybody's like sad face. Um, New York City's filled with artists. I mean, out of 8 million people, right. 7.5 <laughs> are artists, you know. Yeah. So we just couldn't really support them. The way we do support individual artists is if they're working for a community organization. Let's say an artist uh -huh. said to the Bronx Council on the Arts, I want to do a mural project, and it was arranged through them. Then they could come in and get paint, and they could get supplies, but not for their own studio work. Um, you also, now, describe how a school comes in. A whole class comes in? No, the teachers come in. Uh -huh. So we have, um, so in terms of the shopping part, which we call it shopping even though there's no money that exchanges hands, teachers can come in, they make an appointment. We are open to our groups two days a week, Tuesdays in the mornings, Thursdays in the afternoons. So we try to accommodate the mm -hmm. late schedules, you know, the mm -hmm. early schedules, late schedules of all of our members. And they come in and, uh, you know, we talked about it, they go through, they get all their stuff, they go back to their schools. We do have, um, in 2002, we started an education program. Uh, when I came came in in 1998, um, I realized that teachers, because that was my, I'd been hired to sort of bring the schools in, and I realized that a lot of the teachers were looking for very standard arts materials. Where's the tempera paint? Uh, Where's the watercolors? Yeah. And having been a former art teacher, I realized that they needed some training <laughs> on how to use these materials. So we started very slowly, along with Joyce Suarez, who is a colleague of mine, to start doing classes and teaching teachers. And over time, it's now grown into a year-round education program. And so, so we, have, we do trainings for teachers, professional development. We have workshops for students. So we also have class trips that kids come in. They get a tour of a reuse. What is reuse? You yeah. know, everybody knows about recycling, yeah. which is what you right. mentioned in your opening. But reuse is very different. And um, so they get a tour of the facility. They, we talk about reuse and recycling. We talk about all the, the three R's. And then they'll do a pro, uh, an art project. Well, that's so great. So yeah. they can go through and get the material. Well, we pretty much have them. We talk to their teachers beforehand yeah. so we know what they're working on in their classroom. We try to make it relevant to their curriculum right. so it's not just something that they make. And then they're like, well, what do I do with this? And toss So you it. have other partners, the sanitation department. Farm and sanitation. Tell me how that works. Uh, well, they're very generous, and they've been funding us since uh, 1990. And um, we, uh, the funding that they give us allows us to hire some staff and to actually have you know expanded the program. And uh, you know, they're, I think they're pleased with what we do. You know, their mission is to keep the streets clean, right, and to make sure that everything is you know is top drawer. And I think what we do is just sort of an you know an enhancement of what they do. So you, but you also relieve them of the stuff that they have to get rid of. Well, to you a know, degree. to a degree, there's lots of things that, um, yes, that might just get tossed. But you know, people have other options these days. I mean, yeah. I think a lot. I mean, yeah. I, I hope that New Yorkers are really recycling. getting on in recycling <laughs> and really and please, because you know, so much of the landfill is filled with things that can be um, recycled. Used, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really, uh, it's really a shame. Paper makes up, I think, 30 percent of the landfill or something. It's a very high number. That's just crazy. We should be recycling that. So, if a sanitation man finds something great, does he bring it to you? No, no, oh, too bad. no. We often talk about. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't it be great if we had a truck of an, ahead of the truck? <laughs> right. Yes. But um, I mean, that's not. It, that's it's just too much. not. It's just not. It's but I, I remember seeing something about a. Um, an art show by a sanitation man with the stuff that he Oh, collected. I remember. That was a yes. great article. But they're not connected with you. No, 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 no. But we do, you know, the Department of Sanitation, as I mentioned, because they are our partners, you know, we will uh, we support all city agencies. So if the Department of Sanitation needs a chair or a desk mm -hmm. or, you know, with, you know, for furniture that we get in, of course, I remember when I was in. in the city council, I think we took some and we gave some yes. when, when I finished. Yes. And a lot and of city agencies, happens. yes, come to yeah. us. And the Parks Department, uh, for example, they they have lots of after-school programs, and they come in a lot for those materials. But they also come in for infrastructural items, like maybe they need a, a conference room chair or they need a, a right. desk. And right. why spend money, you know, if we <laughs> have it? So do you do outreach? I mean, does somebody read the paper and see that somebody's going out of business? Do you call them? Well, that would be that would be another program with a little more capacity because we are constantly getting calls from people. So, um, you know, we do specific outreach in specific areas. For example, paper is something that we can never get enough of. 
every single organization, whether you're a dance company or whether you're a public school, need paper. For whatever reason, you're making flyers, you're doing artwork with your students. So that we often will call our past donors or we'll try to do some outreach to mm -hmm. the, that kind of field. Um, but um, it's we're often getting so much more than we can really do yeah. outreach for. And we, we say, I mean, this has happened over the years, every time there's a little like, burst of information about materials for the arts we say let's mm. be careful because <laughs> what much. happens is that if people call us you know after this mm -hmm. show airs and i hope they will call us but if they're the expectation is oh well we're sitting around with a truck just yeah. waiting for that call yeah. You know, sometimes it takes us yeah. three, four weeks, and then people are disappointed. I, I used to do costumes for Columbia players when I was in oh. college. And we'd go to the Salvation Army in those days to look for costumes and stuff, but I'm sure we could come to you now. But one of the donations, which I'll never forget, uh, were peacock feathers from, oh. from Tiffany's window displays. And I, so I made a costume as the fourth jester in murder in the cathedral, and it was, he was covered with... Uh, with peacock feathers. <laughs> People really often wonderful. ask about, you know, what are the things yeah. we really, really can never get enough yeah. of. We can never get enough beads. Yeah. Everybody wants beads, and we can never get enough feathers. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, it's such a great thing, and who, you know, you have to, right. Yeah, feathers. So you have another partner, which is the Friends of the Materials for the Arts. Yes, yes. Um, well, our city partners are Department of uh, Sanitation, Cultural Affairs, of course, and the Department of Education. Right. Okay. So, so that so takes care of that. So they pay you. A they they, for they the support stuff doing. they support the the, mm -hmm. the the infrastructure and you know the mm -hmm. the runnings of the program every day and the salaries for most of the employees. In 2002, also we started our own nonprofit called Friends of Materials for the Arts, and that's really been you know the the saving grace. It's been the way that we've been able to do mm -hmm. more, and uh, like the education programming, all of that basically is funded by the friends, That's our teaching incredible. artists, and it's it's such a great public-private partnership, you know, when people say, well, you know, could you use this, could you use that? It's that blending together of the resources of yeah. city government. Right. And it's a private part. That's exactly. the private public part. How did you start that? Was it from a big donor or people who knew your Well, your the, the woman who was the executive director for, of the director of materials for the arts prior to my coming on was Susan Glass. And she had been advised in the late, in the mid 90s to sort of start a non -pro You know, she, mm -hmm. she was advised that you should do this so that you could supplement, mm -hmm. you know, if you're asking the city, you may not always get the, the answer that you want because of city budgets. So she started an advisory group um, and it never really materialized into a Fun full right. Exactly. So what happened was um, in 2000, she left, I became the executive director, and then we decided that we really needed to do this. Uh, and we started our, you know, we went to um, the lawyer, volunteer lawyers for the arts, and they helped us with mm -hmm. our 501c3. And uh, we started, and we had, she had gotten some grants over the years, but they had, it had gone through a sort of other nonprofit, and it was a little bit, you know, you're giving money to materials for the arts, but the check is being written to something else. It, it didn't make sense. So once we started it, we were able to fundraise and write grants, and we had corporate partners in the beginning. Citigroup gave us money. We had money from... Um, you know, from Estee Lauder, we had money for, and yeah. then we just started growing it. And do you have fundraisers? Do you have them in the warehouse? Do, and we just had a <laughs> fundraiser. We Every October, we have something called Mask Marvelous, and that is our annual fundraiser. B.D. Wong was our uh, Master of Ceremonies this year, and um, it's a great, it is in the warehouse. Everybody says, oh, you must do a Manhattan-based fundraiser yeah. because you'll, ne you'll never get beyond that. But And we know that, but the, we just transformed the warehouse. It's so much fun. It's kid-friendly. We have do people makers. make their own costumes at the people party? People make their own masks and hats <laughs> oh, this great. year because costumes is a little bit too much. But uh, <laughs> and we have lots of we had stilt walkers. A lot of our groups we yeah. have them come and they um, they it's entertain. Fabulous. It's a lot of fun. Uh, do you, you also have an artist in residence program? Is we that do. funded by the Friends? It is, and that's fairly new. Uh, right now, we have the third artist in residence that we've had. So we give the um, we look for someone whose practice includes reuse. So we're not going to have someone necessarily who's a watercolor painter. That must be heaven for them. Yeah, it's great. Well, that's exactly right. So what happens is that we give them a small stipend. They have two and a half months. We give them a studio in our space, mm -hmm. and they have to be there on our days when we have our groups in. 
for a certain amount of hours so that our groups can like see, someone can come in done. oh I see that you're yeah. using those ribbons that's fantastic what you know what mm -hmm. are I would never would have thought to do that so right now uh, Vadis Turner is our current artist in residence and um, sh her practice she says has been transformed by her ability to actually have access to so many of these what wonderful kind of things, things does she do well she did beautiful work uh, with ribbon and she's actually made cre she created large paintings with ribbon and fabric, and they are absolutely beautiful, and I hope we can get a shot of some of those. So then do you have, that so belongs we, to the artist, or so to you? So we have, a, well, we have a gallery. <laughs> yes. And so after they, so they get a stipend, they work so that they're um, showing mm -hmm. our members how to use the materials. We give them a gallery show, and then they have to teach a class for us. We have something every third Thursday of the month. We have an open studio. The work uh, is sort of a collaborative work. So. It belongs to the artist. If she, he or she sells it, they we get 50% of it. That's so great. So <laughs> at the gallery, you can go and buy. That's terrific. Yeah. So we have to list that in all the galleries, Saturday in the yeah. Times. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a great thing. Do people make big things? Well, uh, Vadis has some very large pieces. Yeah. She also has some pieces about this big, but she has some very large pieces, and they're quite beautiful. So I read that you do, you have 600 tons of stuff a, a year. year. Yeah, we average about that. It's, you know what, when people say 600 tons, I'm not sure, does it sound so much? 1.2 million pounds, does that sound better? It's the same thing, <laughs> I think. It's the same thing, right. I mean, the, and the size of the warehouse sounds terrific. The size of the warehouse is pretty big. And we're very, very lucky because when we moved, we were in Manhattan for many years, and we moved in uh, 2001, early 2001, to Long Island City. So to who this gave the building space. to you? Well, we don't own the building. We rent. And, uh, you have to pay the rent. We, the city pays the rent. And the sanitation department couldn't find you a big place? You know what? It's, it's, <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, we think about that oftentimes. But at the yeah. time we were moving, this was, yeah. seemed like the best. Uh, and are you, you're in Long Island City now, so it's a very stylish place to be. You know, we are on Northern Boulevard. And um, it's gotten, it's definitely improved since we've been there. But we're not in the sort of cooler part of Long Island yeah. City. I still have a hard time getting a decaf <laughs> coffee <laughs> in our neighborhood. So do, do the movie com a commercial movie company can't come to you and get you no, get stuff, but they donate. But they donate. They donate. They're, and some of that stuff is remarkable, Oh, isn't my it? gosh. We are so happy that, you know, there's lots of filming in New York. Thank goodness for Made in NYC, yeah, right? Yeah. And um, very often those, um, it really almost has to do with whoever the staff is on that film because sometimes we don't get anything they're shooting in New York I don't know what they do with it they sell it or they dump it I don't know um, but there are, but some people go from movie to movie and they know about us and so they will make sure that so the donations. film office doesn't help you oh no they do they but do. you know there are other places that, uh, there's an organization in uh, in Brooklyn called um, film is recycling oh. and and you know that's they sell things yeah. but she's also a nonprofit and she has yeah. um, her connections so very well. You know, we don't want it to get dumped. Wherever right. it goes, if it goes to the Salvation so Army, changed. as long as it doesn't get You're not get in competition dump. with it. No, there's so much stuff in New York that there's no reason <laughs> to be competitive. Do, do the theater groups also give stuff to you? But that's props and they're rented, aren't they? Sometimes they rent them. Sometimes they're, they purchase them. And, and if some, they build something. If they build something, you know, we also have another service, which I didn't mention, which is our online service. We call it direct oh, really? donations. So if you had let's say there were a theater company had some flats, you mm -hmm. know, some set pieces. They might be too big for us to get, and we actually don't even take those, but we have a service where you can list it online, and it's open. It's like Craigslist, but it's for our members only. So we can uh -huh. list one item, or we can list something that's either too big or too small for us to get, or something that has a time constraint. I need it out by Friday. We list it, and our members can view it. So there. anybody who comes in there, who's accepted and able to come in and buy, mm -hmm. becomes a member. Yes, and there's no. You said buy, but it's all free. Right. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. So they just become a member. There's no membership dues or anything. Nope. And as a member, they get all this stuff. That's so they great. Have access to everything. That's yeah. great. And do you? You've made a big difference in the board of education teaching the art teachers. Well, we are the number one provider of materials to the public schools. We used to say art materials, but you know they take furniture, they take yeah, because they cabinets, the they take everything. Yeah. And and there's no if we have it and it can go to a useful place, you know, it should go. So we feel like we have made a difference. Um, our school teachers tell us that. Um, they could not do the work they do if they did not have access. So, I mean, to those you've materials. opened up whole new 
ideas and horizons for That's the other teachers. thing, is that... Or for any teacher, I guess. Right, not just cut, the art teachers. Yes, because we've cut so many art programs, I guess. Too. Right. Well, you know, I, I think know. there's still programs. I mean, yeah. we still see art teachers, we still see dance right. teachers and drama but teachers. But a kindergarten teacher would want to come. Absolutely. Like, and yeah. the thing is, we want the math teacher to be using materials creatively That's in their great. classroom, or the science teacher, yes. instead of, you know, not everybody learns by just the teacher talking and looking at a book. We know that. And there's this national rollout of something called the Common Core, which is all right. about project-based learning, that new curriculum, you have to have materials, and there's no other place. Where are you going to go if you're a math teacher or a science teacher? You're going to come to materials. Or you're going to have to buy it yourself. Exactly. <laughs> Do you, did you ever get a Bunsen burner? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We've gotten really beautiful, um, when the Domino Sugar Factory mm. closed, mm -hmm. we were able to go in and we got beautiful beakers glass beakers from there. Isn't that something? Yeah, yeah. And they're for anything. Yeah. For you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they were just, yes, you could use yeah. them as a prop, you could use them as, yeah. Right. It's a, it sounds like such a fabulous program, and uh, you got a website. We have a website. Which is? MaterialsfortheArts.org, and uh, on there you can see photos, you can see our calendar for classes, you can see our public programs. And, and you can connect also to friends of that that materialsfortheArts.org is the website for that's the friends website. Mm -hmm. Our city website is nyc.gov forward slash mfta. But that's really the site if you're a teacher and you want to log on and make an appointment. If you're a member, that's where they go. Um, but the other website is the friends site. And are you, do you have to worry at budget time each year that you're going to get refunded by? Department of Cultural Affairs, or are you what I, they call baseline? <laughs> I always worry because, well, that always you, helps. you know, <laughs> I'm a worrier, but we've always been, you know, under Kate Levin and under um, Mayor yeah. Bloomberg, you know, that's not totally been an issue. It. And we expect that our next, you know, uh, administration will, we don't cost that's a lot and right. we give back a lot. Well, you, you are very lucky because you're not only doing wonderful things, but you love it. So thank you very much, Harriet. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Is there any people you'd like to hear and topics you'd like us to explore? Please let me know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. Or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.